Hello, everyone. Welcome to another screening series Q&A. My name is Camelia Shofani, and I'm the Senior Manager of Public Programs and Events here at the International Documentary Association. For our blind or low vision attendees, I have dark curly hair, dark eyes, uh, light skin, uh, and a gray shirt. I'd like to thank our sponsors, KCRW and Variety, for making this possible. Please visit documentary.org forward slash screening dash series for more information on our lineup. This evening, we'll be having a conversation between moderator uh, Fidel Martinez, who is an editorial director of Latino Initiatives at the LA Times, and filmmaker Rodri Rodrigo, <laughs> sorry, Reyes, whose film Sanson and Me premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. Before we get started, I'd like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. Without further ado, I'll give it to Fidel. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, Rodrigo, hola, como estas? Hola, que tal? Um, so just before I, I proceed, uh, I'm wearing a pink sweater, a green hat and glasses, and there's a blue portrait behind me. Um, Rodrigo, so uh, let's talk about your film, Sansonio, or San Sanson and Me. Um, it, to me, obviously, the thing that really struck me was the usage of recreation, right, to tell a, a, a nonfiction narrative story, right? Um, how did that idea come about? Hey, thank you, Fidel. And, you know, um, for, for our low vision viewers, I'm a thin uh, man with a beard, a black t-shirt and, and bald. And, um, you know, for, for me, the, the idea of, um, of using these recreations came from not wanting to follow the rules of the prison. Because according to the prison, Sanson didn't deserve to even have a voice, right? I couldn't interview him. I, there was no archive. They just didn't want anything to do with his story or anyone else to hear his story. And so those recreations gave his voice a lot of power. They brought his letters to life. They brought the best of him, you know, out for the audience. And so I, I wanted to break those rules because I didn't want to play, you know, by the guidelines of the system. I wanted us to really be able to, to break break his voice out of prison. And I think the recreations do that in a very beautiful way. And, and we, we learn so much about who he is as a man, even though we, we never see him, even though we, we never really meet the, the, the documentary reality of Sanson, we get to a deeper, a deeper truth. Right, and so because of this, you know, the, the conversation between the two of you is, is through the written word, correct? And 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 the, the the letters are sort of brought to the screen. Now, it, it really made me. If for me, it, it was really interesting because, you know, there there's a certain there's certain types of you know like documentary styles, right? The cinema verite, right? The very much fly on the wall. But here, um, this documentary is very much not that. You are you yourself are a character in in the documentary. Um, what was the thought process of, of, of including yourself in like being a character within your own work? Well, it was really, it was really hard. It, it was one of the hardest things um, to do, but I, oh, you know, this project took 10 years. So, so over time, I realized that my friendship with Sanson was just as important as his story, like us coming together as friends and trying to talk about this, trying to connect and support each other was just as important as the rest of the film. And that's why I needed to be in it because as Latinos, many times we're very divided. You know, we're, we're very divided. We don't have a lot of solidarity sometimes across class. There's a lot of issues uh, with colorism as we know for sure. And I wanted to show what it takes to build a relationship and a supportive relationship, friendship between two, two men, you know, um, like he says to me, you know, my life is very different than yours. Um, you know, my, the way he grew up was so different. And, um, and he's absolutely right about that. 
but it doesn't mean we can't be friends. So I wanted people to to step into that relationship and also to uh, to understand how we tell these stories. You know, um, he's commenting on the film as we're watching the film, which I think is very empowering to his voice and to his concerns. Um, and and he also is mentoring me, right? He's teaching me things, and hopefully the things that he shares with me resonate with the audience. Yeah, you, you know what was interesting is is when I, while, while watching your film, I, I I couldn't help but to think of the documentary, um, what is it called? Stories We Tell, right? Which is also a documentary in which there's there's a, a heavy usage of of recreation, right? And and ultimately the 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 facts of the story are are, are basically coming from memory, right? And and from a very specific point of view, right? Which to me it's as a journalist, you know, there's a great debate about, you know, objectivity, right? Big O objectivity, you know, and and to me, I, I my personal beliefs in that is that no such thing exists, right? Because as is very evident in, in your film, your own preconceived notions of whatever are brought into this project, right? So those are very much shaping the way in which the film is playing out because it's Sanson responding to you, you know. So there's this dialogue that exists, you know. So, so I, I, I found that I found that uh, narrative technique to be very fascinating. Um, but it also sort of like to it, like for me, something that was really interesting is there are scenes in which, you know, Sanson kind of calls you out, right? It's like he he says, you know, when I first decided to do this movie, you know, like he says, like I don't want this to to you know work in my against me you know which which to me is really interesting right because it sort of like brings the the for the lack of a better word the the importance of getting the story correctly you know um anyway i know i just rambled but i i'd lo I'd love to hear your thoughts on 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 that yeah, you know, absolutely. I think we're used to seeing prison stories that are very clean. You know, they have a clean villain, they have a clean hero. But the reality is Sanson is one of thousands and thousands of kids who have a complicated story. And what he's saying is, you know, my story is complicated, but I don't, I don't, you know, I'm in a very vulnerable position and I'm trusting you. And that's what really happens when somebody gives us our, their story and how, allows us to make a film or a, a, or a piece out of it. They're, they're trusting us and they're being very vulnerable. And I think we need to listen as, as, as creators, but also as a community, um, what are the needs of, of folks who are, who are in these positions? You know, and I think the film, the film presents us that so that we can have an honest conversation around what it takes to tell these stories. You know, um, there's another moment in the film where I talk about how people were asking me to pick a more heroic character, someone they could admire and I think that that's really dangerous because if we really want to understand what happens to the Sansons of the world, we cannot ask them to be clean heroes. That's just another way of silencing them. And I think there's a learning process that my character goes through that I hope will echo with lots of people, you know. And um, I, I actually just got back from screening the film in, in Mexico at two festivals, including the Morela Film Festival. And what was really interesting to me is that in Mexico, people had so much love for Sanson because they understood that he left a broken, a broken system, you know, a system in Mexico that, that does not support uh, migrants. That's why they leave. But they also know that many people end up paying uh, a very high cost for chasing the American dream. And Sanson in, in his own way was telling me that, you know, he's like, I, I, I've, I've, I've gone through a lot and I want to know that you're going to be there with me, right? Um, that you're not going to just take my story. And I'm not going to become some monster that you actually want to see who I am as a human being. Um, so it's, it's been a really wonderful journey to, to go through the whole process. And I, and I think the film captures that, you know, that connection and what can happen when you actually listen to somebody. And, and you, can, you see that he's a, he's a, he's a poet, man. He's, he's a great writer and he he's a man of wisdom and, and he's he's gathering a lot of knowledge as as he grows up you know and and he has this hope that one day 
he can he can be free, uh, just like his voice is free now with this movie. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think that you know, being Mexican American myself and feeling that sense of you know, like privilege, you know, like, cause even within, within our own families, right. Circumstances vary, right. Some, some family members could be undocumented while others are not. And it's, it's sheer luck for lack of a better word. Right. And, and I, I found it really interesting. Like I didn't see him. I, I saw, I saw him as a, like neither bad or good, but just an individual who like everyone else is flawed. Right. And, and, and what I found really interesting as well about the documentary was the usage of his family members to recreate his story and sort of the, you know, it becomes very meta, right? Because as, as we see in the film, um, Donito, um, that's his name, correct? His, his little nephew who plays him. Okay. So yeah, Donito. Donito, Donito is, in a way playing his uncle but also he's going through the very same things as in his own life you know so it's there's a certain level of of meta-ness to it absolutely and i think like having the family perform these memories is is really important because sanson is sharing with them what he went through things that he hasn't been able to talk to them about because they can't visit him and you realize that there's a cycle right why is it that so many Latinos are incarcerated and punished with these ridiculous sentences, you know, like it, it's, it, they're being punished for being poor, honestly, and, and poor, poor and brown. And I think that the film recognizes that. And at the same time, in the telling of his story, Sanson is taking back his power. You know, he's taking back his power over his life and he's telling it with beauty. You know, I, I always imagine the film like a corrido, you know, like, like a ballad. You know, and those these ballads, they they don't always tell everything that happened. Um, they're not, they're you know, they're they're not journalism, but they're telling a deeper truth, and they're honoring people's struggle. And so um, that's one of the reasons why we fought so hard to to not make it like a telenovela, you know, like to not make it like a soap opera, but really um, bring in real life, you know, and let families, you know. The family act in the film, but us as audiences walk away with questions, you know, about why this happens and, and what else we can do. You know, our, our, our system is so broken. You know, the court, the court minimized this story and there was so much pain in his family and so much hope that just was never considered uh, when he when he was punished. I, w- I wouldn't even say sentence because sentence sounds like justice. I think he was just punished. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's truly, you know, the, the 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 presence of institutions are very much there, you know, whether it's an orphanage or prison, right? It, it's it, it's there's this weird dichotomy that exists, you know, because in the documentary he says this is the best house I've ever had, right? So in a way, you know, it's somewhat of an acknowledgement that being part of being institutionalized you know could arguably lead to a better quality of life but at the same time we're talking about prison right so it it definitely seems like i i think to me what really struck me about your documentary was that you know just the tragedy of it you know uh, it, it it almost seems like preordained right that that this was going to be the path that he was like this was going to be how he was going to end up right um do do you feel do you feel like um like please tell me if i'm wrong here but i I, something that i observed was it feels like you acknowledged in your documentary early on that that you went into it with a certain level of naivete you know, and the sooner you like as as the film progresses, you become aware of it, right? And it, it's almost like you're absolutely right. Like Sanson really does keep you in check, you know, because he he talks about like this is hurting. Like, have you thought about how this could potentially hurt my family, right? So so tell me about the the mindset going into this project and how that evolved as it went along. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think all all great documentaries uh, are are naive at the beginning because you have to take a risk to jump into someone's life into another world. Um, you don't think about the 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 impact and the consequences and the challenges. Like I didn't I didn't even know that the prison wouldn't let me interview him. So, it, you know, I'm very kind of happy and proud of, of having been naive because. Um, you know, as time has gone on and I've worked as an interpreter more and more, I, I've, I've never felt the urge to connect with anyone else because you just have to keep going and you, you get used to it. And so documentary, I think, comes from that place of curiosity of like, what's going on in the world? And you kind of have to be a little naive, but then you mature through that process, you know, and I, and I think... Um, both for Sanson and myself, like the film was that journey, you know, because as you see in the film, he, he also has to confront um, some of his own actions and start making different decisions inside the prison. And I, and I think, you know, about this idea of being preordained, um, in a way, you could argue Sanson has been, you know, like the walls of prison have been chasing him um, throughout his whole life, you know. He, he did not have the same shots that another kid would have had. If he had been a, a, a white kid, uh, if he had been, you know, like a migrant like myself who grew up with a library, um, you know, and, and that, should, that should be really, really um, outrageous to us, man. Because if, if we're trying to really build justice and equality in our society, we should be, we should be outraged that the poorest and the most disadvantaged are the ones who get the most punished. And I think that's ultimately what I learned from this story is that there's a great honor in, in being allowed to be Sanson's friend in him collaborating with me. There's a great responsibility to speak to, to his life, you know, with that perspective, you know, because he really, he's really trusting us, you know, all of us who have watched it, he hasn't even been able to see it. That's how um, unequal and unfair the system is that he, um, he, he, he can't get a DVD. He can't get a, a video file. He has to wait for it to literally be on national television next year on independent lens so he could watch it. And, um, and, I, and I think behind that, you learn how strong of a man he is and, and how, how, you know, my takeaway from that is that he, he's made me a better filmmaker in that process because he's taught me the value of listening you know, and, and really being vulnerable as well on my end, you know, because we're taught as, as filmmakers that we're the experts and we have so much power in the edit, we could clean everything up. Um, and I think in the film, you, you see you see us wrestling with all of that. Yeah, and, and you know, truthfully for me, I, I think it was important to capture that in the documentary, right? Because otherwise, you know, how do you avoid it from coming across as exploitative and extractive? You know what I mean? So like the fact that there was this dialogue very much, you know, like the dialogue between the two of you, between the, like through the written word really did, you know, because that was the foundation of this documentary, it really did give him equal voice, you know, like you weren't speaking for him. He was speaking for himself, right? It just was. It just so happened that it wasn't his voice that we heard. Yeah, exactly. And you know, um, I've tried to continue with that listening upon the release of the film. I just got back, like I said, from Mexico, from Morelia and Mexico City, and uh, and I and I would show up at the screenings with postcards for them to um, for for the audience to write to him and to be able to to send their perspective directly to him you know um and, and I, I i sent him reviews i sent him you know long summaries of how it went down i'm going to write this big letter about mexico and now about talking to you you know and like i just want him to be as much as part of the process as he can and to also just be really proud of what he's accomplished you know he 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 really uh is the heart of this film and he accomplished that from a very difficult situation that many of us can't even imagine. Yeah, um, 
You know, it's interesting, right? Because I, I'm sure that stems from a desire to make him feel, you, you know, like it, it's not to speak generally about, you know, a diaspora that includes millions of people, but I always feel like, you know, for me, part of my Mexican identity is like, man, that could have been me. You know what I mean? Like, there's an element of that. <clears throat> so as, as you know, the, the, you know, your film gets to be played in front of audiences, like, do you feel like, I don't know how to say this, like, it, it, do you feel any semblance of like, not guilt per se, but like, a, like a, a weird feeling of, I don't want to say undeserved praise, right? Because it is very much deserved, right? But it, 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 like, I think what I'm getting at is the that that unfairness of, you know, the fact that Sanson can't experience that himself. You know, how do you yeah. do? Do you have any of those? Like, can you talk to me about any those feelings? D did that make sense? You know, I, I was trying to I was trying to frame it in a way that, you know, like I wasn't trying to like insult you you know what i mean like it's 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 no no no, it's, of course not. <laughs> yeah. no but but it's the, the reality right like that that he because of the system is not allowed to participate in fully in a in a process that is is actually very healthy and very helpful to him and and helpful to all of us as a society if he's a part of it um yeah no it's totally tough and and that's why i started bringing these postcards to festivals that's why I want him to be as involved in the process as possible. Um, and because at the end of the day, it's not, it's not documentment, you know, it's a documentary about something that's happening. It's an invitation to connect. And, and, you know, as an artist, we, we, in, you know, journalists have the situation too. Like we, we tell a story and then sometimes we get attention and praise. We build a career. And I think, it's okay to do that, but we also need to acknowledge and honor where that comes from and the relationships that we have with real people in real life, you know, where that comes from. And I'm fighting really hard, you know, to, for him to be as, as involved as possible. And who knows what's going to happen when others see that film inside prison, when other Sansones can see themselves reflected in this story, because his story is actually very similar to what many people have gone through. Um, I think it's going to have a huge, huge impact and it's going to empower him and others to, to, to continue telling their stories as a way of, of taking back, you know, their voice and, and resisting the system, you know? Um, so it's, it's a big responsibility, I think, as a director. And, you know, we have praised artists very uh, naively to, to bring back that word, you know, we have, we need to question artists, we need to ask them to the hard questions, that's okay, and, and, and we, we shouldn't get offended, you know, as directors by that, um, we should, we should be open about our relationships, this is what it's like, this is, this is how we're working together, this is what folks think about the film, um, this is how it's impacted them, that's all really important, and I think especially right now, um, Latinos have a lot of soul searching to do, a lot of questions to do about ourselves as a community. Um, I feel like we're part of the, 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 the solution and the problem, you know, of why kids like Sanson have been uh, caught up in the system. We, we also need to step up. So um, I, I totally hear you and, and, I, and I, I feel that, you know, I don't ever want to be complacent around that responsibility. Yeah, and and I I think your you know like bringing up journalism is is so on point because you're absolutely right. You know there is a certain level of you know you feel it when you're dealing with someone else's story. You know, and you know the fact that they are entrusting you. You know, like to deliver their story, it's 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 quite a, a heavy responsibility, right? And you know, I, I constantly live in fear of speaking with someone and then them coming to me is like, you mischaracterized what I'm about and what I'm saying, you know, so, so that that was sort of, you know, as, as, as someone whose profession is, is very much in 
similar to yours right it's it's a uh, yeah it's always sort of like you know like i'll write a story and i'll get praise for it it's like it's not like the people you know what i mean and it, it almost feels like une- like terrible because it's my byline there you know when it's someone else's story so that that's sort of like where my question was coming from so i'm glad you took it the way that it was intended. Um, this is why oh, absolutely. I write so I can edit. <laughs> well, well, you know the 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 role of our position, you know, is we bring we bring our talent and our craft right to reality. We bring that, and I think Chanson very much understands that. Uh, all he's saying is like, hey, you know, let let's let's be aware of where that talent is working, right, where it's operating. And ultimately, you know, I talk to Sanson all the time. I talked to him when I was in Mexico uh, and telling him about what the festival was like. And, and, and so we're walking together in this process. And I hope people um, really take that away from the film because if we want to really address reality and all its complexity, we have to be willing to, to be vulnerable ourselves, right? Like, otherwise we're going to be exposed to someone coming in and giving us really easy answers about the way the world is and and in our country right now that easy answer means oh look at these immigrants they're coming from somewhere else they're destroying everything they're evil and you're good you know and those easy answers are really damaging and they're destroying us you know um Sanson is not a villain he's he's a human being and we need to respect him and do the work you know to to honor him yeah well rodrigo i i I believe that is all the time that we have um thank you so much for this conversation it was very enjoyable and your i congrats on the documentary i thought it was phenomenal thank you fidel and i hope uh, we can share a meal in los angeles sometime soon i look forward to it you could take me on the town (laughs) i look sounds good take care Thank you, everyone.